This year has been, I've seen a big increase in, uh, the, in my driving efficiency. I was number one, I think, total driving. At, I don't know if I still am, but I was heading into the US Open anyway, and that's a category I've never done particularly well in before. So for me, that's, that's a lot of that's been down to um, being very comfortable with the technology. And the other thing was really working hard in the gym, really sort of freeing up my hips a little bit, be, you know, learning to, I guess, squat, you know, get into a deep, true deep squat position that really kind of freed up the whole backswing for me and can create a bit more power. The key to hitting the ball well though as well, and hitting it longer, is, is also good rhythm. I think that's one thing I, I work hard on, um, is, is how I take it very smoothly away from the ball and I feel like I, I, the backswing develops. I feel like a lot of people are in a bit of a rush to get to the top and certainly in even more of a rush to get to the ball. And another nice thought for amateurs is to make the fastest point of their swing a foot past the ball. It'll never actually, never actually be the case. You're always gonna be the quickest at the ball, but if you're thinking about the fastest point of your swing being past the ball, I think you're gonna be a lot more patient into impact. One thing that I think has helped me become a good iron player is learning how to, uh, you know, learning to feel impact. Um, and there's a lot of different variables in impact, and a lot of it is due to uh, attack angle. And this is where the track man's helped a lot of players and a lot of coaches is that um, basically, an angle of attack, in a sense, affects club path. The steeper you swing into the ball, the more left you have to have your path. The shallower you are, the more you can have it down the line. So there can be many different types of swings, but you need, they need to kind of match up. So if you swing steeply, you better be swinging to the left. Um, basically, that cancels out the path. That gives you a zero path. Um, and so, you know, that, I think that understanding of TrackMan and those, the, the laws of, you know, the geometry through the ball, I think that's been incredibly helpful. Um, but the, I guess comp compressing the ball, um, hitting down on it, that's what I've probably increased more than anything with working with Sean. I used to try and sort of keep, be very shallow and, and return the club at 90 degrees. I now have a little bit of forward lean with the, with the hands at impact. And I feel like that um, that really really helps my strike, but also you know um, it stabilizes the the face through impact as well. To get forward lean, you have to get your weight onto your left side. If you're hitting from the from your right leg, you're always going to flip it. So basically, just really getting through the shot, feeling like post impact, you know, you got 90% of your weight on your left leg. Um, I think if you do that, you're going to start to at least give yourself a chance to make a good impact. When you're creating power in a golf swing, it's all about the ground up. You know, your ground reaction forces, driving your legs. You know, your legs are going first, and then your hips, and then your arms, and then your hands. So that's the chain. And I think when you get to wedge play, it's the opposite. I feel like you need your upper body doing more of the work, and your lower half being very quiet. So for me, that's where, that's where things change completely. Um, you know, if you want to hit a soft wedge shot, you need to be really feeling like it's all upper body related and you almost need to make sure that you've always got your upper body turning more than your lower half and that really gives you a nice shallow um, you know shallow hit through the ball but gives you a very soft flight and there's lots of intricate little things you can do with your hands and you know you can play it where you know your hands finish in line with your forearms that's going to give you a mid trajectory and to hit a higher shot you you're having your hands above your forearms you know, putting has been the area of my game that I've kind of really had to fight hard to, to, to find. I mean, I've gone through, I've tried to be perfect with my putting stroke and that's not the way to make putts. Um, you know, you can have, I've, I've had my putting stroke perfect on the putting green and go out and make nothing. I think it's the, the ability to read the greens and I do a lot of that now with my feet, believe it or not. Um, you know, I'll walk around the ball in a bit of like a semicircle, and I'll try and feel the point in the green where I'm walking downhill and there's a point where you start to move uphill. And then as you, as you get to that point in the green, that's called the inflection point, which is a bit of an aim point term, but you get to the inflection point so you know where the straight line is. And then you can easily determine if your ball's on the right side, it's a right to left putt. And if your ball's on the left side of that inflection point, it's a left to right putt. So I think I've really begun to read the greens much better, which has helped me make some putts of, of, of length. And um, I think holding out around the cup is always just about the discipline of having your, eye, your eyes still. I think as soon as you start peaking with the short ones, I mean, that's where, you know, if, you're, if your eyes move, your upper body moves. And if your upper bodies move, your hand, you know, it, it just creates all sorts of problems. So for me, the biggest thing, uh, you know, an amateur can do is keep their eyes still and feel like the putter goes past their sort of peripheral vision, keeping their eyes very quiet.